Thank you, Michelle. This is Scotty Cowling, and I'm going to give you the turbo whirlwind description of the Tangerine SDR project. It's a modular open source software defined radio that I hope you find as exciting as I do. So what is the Tangerine SDR project? Well, it's modular open source, like I said, and it's a uh, software platform. I envision lots of software mods to be uh, going on over the years using the same hardware. It's all run by a group of volunteers led by Tapper and ORI dedicated to the building of a pool of open source software defined radio design info. Kind of like uh, the OpenHP SDR project, if you are familiar with that. The following features are a hallmark of Tangerine SDR. Uh, the idea is to make it modular, so there's a wide range of cost-based performance options from about $300 to over $1,000, depending on what kind of features you want to add. All open source hardware and software, and uh, it's really gonna advance the state of the radio art, we think. So what are the components of the Tangerine SDR radio? Actually, it has four components, a data engine baseboard, kind of like a small motherboard, RF modules, there are two sockets for them. So you can use one, two of the same or two different ones, a socket for a clock module. And uh, at, currently there's plans for one particular type of clock module, but we're open to uh, future modules, depending on the performance required and a uh, compute engine, which is typically a single board computer or a host computer, a remote computer, not, not really part of the Tangerine, but as you're gonna see, it's uh, important to include this as integral to the Tangerine SDR radio as a system. So here's a block diagram. You can see where we have the uh, two RF modules on the left, clock module on the right with an FPGA in the middle doing the heavy lifting. And we've added a three port gigabit ethernet switch so that you can hook it directly to the single board computer or the local host computer and to your local network all at the same time. So what features do we have? It's an FPGA, FPGA based gigabit ethernet direct sampling receiver. We offer full receive coverage from 100 kilohertz to 60 megahertz. Being direct sampling, we convert the entire band at the same time. Very nice, easy to use web-based configuration program. So uh, like Michelle said, no software to load. Uh, your browser does the heavy lifting there. Multiple streams, as Michelle also said, we can cover all bands from 160 through six meters. And we additionally have a USB 3 port and a USB 2 port for expansion for things like uh, RTL, DVB dongles, or uh, additional high-speed data channel using USB 3. And currently the out of the gate, we're gonna have receive capability, but transmit capability is a future option. We are planning for that. So you'll end up with a transceiver. This is the uh, somewhat uh, convoluted picture of what the thing will look like. Um, the baseboard is in black in the middle here. The blue outlines on the top and bottom are the RF modules, which actually go in underneath. The, uh, on the top, you have the clock module in the lower right and an I.O. module in the upper left, which is compatible with a Raspberry Pi I.O. module. And so you end up with the, basically a three board stack that's the final tangerine system. Then of course the ethernet uh, connector in the upper right, that goes off to the local computer, local host computer. And uh, by the way, that's a two stack of ethernet ports. So you get two ports. The third port that we were talking about, the three port adapter, the third port goes to the uh, FPGA down here in the lower left. Okay, the RF module is uh, kind of defines the RF performance of the radio. So uh, this is the first RF module we have and a uh, little bit of an eye chart here, but uh, that's the block diagram of the module that plugs in. Again, it's a pluggable module. Features of the module, dual 14 bit a to D at 122 mega samples per second. We have an attenuator on board as well as a low noise amplifier. And we have a fixed 55 megahertz low pass filter, which uh, is removable in case you wanna do undersampling. And we also have some onboard uh, calibration noise sources and as well as a user defined plug-in filter. So if you want to uh, lose the 55 megahertz bandpass filter or low pass filter, plug in your own custom filter 
or even if you wanted to plug in the preamplifier that is supported on the uh, headers on the RF module. Future RF modules, uh, personal space weather station receiver, we uh, are thinking about doing that. Uh, phase four, uh, well, actually, this is the first one. Personal space weather station receiver is the first one we're going to build, just a receiver. Then we're talking about um, many different uh, RF modules to support the multitude of LSI receiver and transceiver modules that are coming up from Lime Semiconductor and from analog devices. So you'll see those coming along in the future. Next up, we have the clock module. The clock module was designed as a separate plug-in board so that we could offer a basic clock syst clocking system at an inexpensive price or work your way up to a GPS disciplined oscillator at a uh, more substantial price point. We're gonna start out with a GPS disciplined oscillator because that's what's gonna be required for the personal space weather station, but it's gonna be a very high performance oscillator. And uh, John Ackerman is going to talk on that right as soon as I get done here and give you all the lowdown on the uh, GPS DO clock module. Future data engine boards, we're talking about expandability since we're modular. Uh, so maybe larger and faster FPGAs, more RAM storage, uh, maybe an SSD on board and higher speed data ports. It's advantage of using gigabit ethernet is it scales to 10 gig E, 40 gig E, et cetera, very easily. But same RF ports to allow you to reuse the RF ports, same ones that you have now. This is a real eye chart here, but it's uh, I put this in here for you to come back to for reference. And it's a basically a comparison price and feature comparison of many, many SDRs that are currently on the market today. I tried to limit the, uh, the chart to uh, boards that you can buy. They're typically boards. So I didn't really include full blown radios. These are more like experimenter boards. And it's very difficult to compare a lot of these. You, you really have to go and look them up and look at the features yourself because some of these, especially on the receive and transmit DACs, they have multiple channels, some of them do. And so it, this chart is maybe a little bit simplistic, but gives you a good jumping off point to get in a feel for some of the uh, SDRs that are available today. Okay, so that said, what can I use it for? Well, the first application is going to be the Hamsai Personal Space Weather Station, but the plans are these other uses down here, like Michelle said, a phase four satellite ground station, perhaps uh, we'll have uh, boards for that. Uh, definitely academic uses to teach SDR and FPGA techniques at universities, uh, amateur communications SDR. So you can basically pick the features that you want, plug them in, get the performance level that you want to pay for. Also, we will have the capability to do a remote ham radio, remote control, and uh, it's a really up and coming feature of most SDRs these days. And there's a few interesting things that you can do with this radio that I will get to toward the end of my talk here. So a couple examples. This would be the personal space weather station example with a mid-grade receiver. This is the module we're working on now. This is the GPS DO we're working on now and the data engine working in now. So this configuration will be first out of the gate. The satellite ground station, we would use uh, undersampling on the receiver with an external LNB and an upconverting power amplifier at the dish. And basically we could use the, the same receiver board, but we'll undersample and we'll have a new transmitter board that will be a baseband transmitter board that then you can upconvert. Okay, or if you're an experimenter, you might want a more premium receiver or a more premium transmitter. And you may not need the GPS DO function, but you might want a very low noise premium oscillator. So we will be able to offer that configuration. And if you just want to get your feet wet in SDR and you don't want to spend a lot of money, perhaps a basic low cost entry with uh, low cost and lower performance receivers, but uh, this, the same platform, the same firmware, but just low, a little bit lower performance for a little less money. So a little bit on the terrestrial weather station. This is just an example of a weather station, but we're thinking of the same kind of equipment only for space weather. So what would space weather have? 
Well, basically you want to listen to the ionosphere and we're not, since we don't have a transmitter, we're going to listen to what they call signals of opportunity, which are existing transmitters like uh, WWV, uh, hams, uh, broadcast stations, uh, things like that, beacons. So with things like a lightning detector, uh, total electron content receiver to measure the ionosphere, uh, you've all heard of solar storms with traveling ionos disturbance. Well, you'd like to be able to detect those and kind of monitor what happens in the ionosphere to WWV, say, or uh, other broadcast stations uh, when there is one of these traveling ionospheric disturbances and see you can uh, characterize them. And if we have a whole network of these all linked together via the internet, then we can get a much wider picture of what happens to the ionosphere worldwide during one of these disturbances. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, uh, HAMSci has a Zoom workshop coming up on March 19th, 20th. So go to hamsci.org and you can uh, get lots more information on the science aspects of this of the, of the uh, Tangerine SDR uses. So, so what can I do with it besides a personal space weather station? Because that's all well and good, but uh, what about you know, my ham radio? Well, as Michelle touched on a little bit, we're going to have uh, software and firmware to do a whisper monitor and an FT8 monitor. And these are really interesting because like Michelle said, we can do simultaneous reception of all bands. And by the way, you could do that while you're using the radio as a personal space weather station. So you can monitor multiple slices of frequencies. So you could be on listening to FT8 or, and Whisper at the same time while you're monitoring a uh, atmospheric disturbance, say up at uh, 24 megahertz or some frequency, a higher frequency. And the interesting thing is on the FT8 monitor, we have a feature where you could put in a call sign and if the radio hears that call sign on FT8 on any band, it will send you an email telling you where that signal was heard and what band and what time. So you can connect with your buddy who just happened to appear on FT8 because say propagation opened up to the Midwest and you're out West and now all of a sudden you can hear him. So interesting uh, concept of uh, working DX. And uh, we'll be able to support full digital mode transmit operations once we build ourselves a transmitter. And another interesting thing is you can hook it up to your local home network and you can have multiple radio clients hooked to the same radio using these multiple streams. So you could have a radio in your bedroom, a radio in your ham shack, and for you hardcore enthusiasts, the radio in your bathroom too. So what is Tapper's mission in all this? Uh, Michelle touched very good on a lot of that, but uh, just to reiterate, uh, we support R&D development with, with R&D funding and, funding and early volume production. And the result is we end up with a growing pool of contributors and experimenters. And that's kind of what we're aiming for. Our webpage, tangerinestr.com. Please take a look and see if, uh, if you can get excited about this as I am. Anyway, Thank you very much. And uh, we'll segue here to John, who is going to give you lots of details on the Tangerine SDR clock module.